Hello everybody, I'm Maria and welcome and welcome back to my nook. Today's video is going to be a reading vlog or maybe just a vlog because you might already be able to either hear it or even see it. I am sick with a cold and it has not been fun so far. I mean, when is being sick ever fun? Let's be honest. But that just means that I don't quite know if I will get to any of the plans that I'm making for this vlog, if I'll have the energy for it, I don't know how long I'll be sick for, you know, stuff like that. So we'll see what this vlog will end up being, I guess. But let's still talk about some plans that I have for this vlog because I am planning on reading something and doing something else that I'm really really excited for. Let's talk about reading plans first though. I am planning on reading God Killer by Hannah Kana in this vlog. I haven't started the book yet. It's the monthly book club pick for November of the Women's and Words book club which is run by Cassandra Lynn and Katie is reading and the fact that this book was chosen for their book club is kind of funny for me personally because I saw this book in the bookstore months ago and I saw the cover and thought "Ooh, that is stunning and looks so interesting so I picked up the book and I read the synopsis on the back and thought that sounds so intriguing but then I saw the price of the book and I thought maybe we're not going to buy this book but now that it has been chosen for the book club i checked out my library and saw that they have acquired a copy of this book on libby so i borrowed this book and now i'm gonna read it anyway which is really cool actually i'm really excited to dive into this book I think it's about somebody who made it their mission to kill the gods for whatever reason and there's a god that's kind of attached to a human soul or something like that. I'm not quite sure. I really do not remember enough about the synopsis to explain anything about that. And my other plan for this vlog is something I am so so incredibly excited about. Maybe you've seen this sort of thing on social media already. These DIY book nooks that you can build up and then put on your shelf. And one of my best friends, by the way, hi if you're watching this, actually gifted me something like that. And I am so excited to build this thing up. I have no idea how long this is going to take me, especially considering that I'm sick and like my attention span is lowered because obviously I get exhausted more easily and stuff. I've already peeked into the package and there's quite a lot of parts. I've also already taken a look at the manual and that is um, interesting because the English in that manual is not really Englishing at some points. Like for example, for the first couple of steps it just says like do this and then copy and paste. And I'm like, do you mean I'm supposed to repeat that step? Probably, but it says copy and paste. So I'm curious to see how other steps in the instruction will be described or worded, but I'm sure I'll be fine. I'm definitely really, really excited to start building this thing up. It's kind of like Sherlock detective themed and I am I'm just so excited to be doing this so yeah those are my plans for this vlog as I already said I don't know if I will get to any of this or maybe I won't end up reading anything or something completely different it really depends on how long I will stay sick or how quickly I recover and how much energy I will have and stuff so yeah I am still really hoping that this vlog will be cozy and chill for me and hopefully you will enjoy it as well. So let's get right to it without talking 
anymore. Alright, hello. It is the next day. Please don't mind my hair. I took a much needed shower earlier and it's still wet. Also, I think I'm feeling quite a bit better today, which is really, really nice. I have a couple of updates for you. First of all, let's talk about an update I have on my DIY book nook crafting project. I spent so many hours crafting yesterday and it was actually so 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 nice. I think I got quite a lot of steps done. I don't really know how many steps there are in total and I think I have a lot of steps still left to do. But I think I've already managed to do a lot of steps, which I think is really, really nice. And also like some of the steps had to be repeated like 16 times, 24 times, 10 times, 12 times. I think I showed you, I crafted like, I don't know, 40 or 50 of these like teeny tiny books i've got them all stacked up back here and then i crafted 10 of those tiny newspaper rolls and 12 of those tiny file bags and i also crafted three boxes already and put books and newspaper rolls in those which honestly looks really nice although one of those boxes I think I can show you, hang on. This box is literally bursting at the seams because the books inside are crafted in a way that they have actual pages. Oops. No. Instead of just um, tiny wood blocks, basically, which means that they expand in size or they try to expand in size and the box can't really take it which i'm not really sure if i should do something about that or what i should do about that but i'm sure it's gonna be fine um with the file bags actually i felt like i did so much unnecessary stuff because i had to cut out these papers and then like fold them together and then cut out the file bags and then put the papers i folded into the file bags and then like fold the file bags closed and then I think I was supposed to glue the file bags shut, which I didn't do because I kind of thought that's unnecessary because they still close even if I don't glue them shut. And also if I don't glue them shut, I still have the opportunity to take the little papers out technically. But the thing is, if I want to take the little papers out of the tiny file bags, I will have to either unfold the file bags again completely or I will probably end up ripping apart the file bags. So it felt kind of unnecessary to put all those tiny papers into the file bags because you can't see them, you can't really take them out. So 
I don't know, but it's fine. I did it and it was actually pretty enjoyable. I think I mentioned in my intro clip that I wasn't sure how much I would be able to get done because my attention span is pretty low at the moment. My brain can't really focus on too many things at once at the moment. But this work is just kind of mind numbing almost, which is so good for me at the moment though, because like repeating the same steps over and over and over again is so relaxing because at some point I can just stop thinking about it because I've entered a certain type of routine and it's just oh it's so relaxing so good I've been listening to podcasts but while doing that or I've been watching YouTube videos while doing that and it's just it feels really relaxing and I've been really enjoying this and I am really looking forward to continuing that work but let's also talk about a reading update I have. I started God Killer yesterday and I've also read a little bit today. Let me quickly check which page I'm on. I'm on page 32. I finished chapter 2 and so far Oh, that was also a prologue. So I read the prologue and the first two chapters. And um, let me tell you, the prologue started off with a real bang. That was... Um, so the prologue was honestly so disturbing. <laughs> so like, please check the trigger warnings for this book honestly the the prologue was was really heavy i was like wow we're doing this like right off the bat we're doing this <laughs> okay <laughs> all right like okay <laughs> and then we had a pretty big time jump to chapter one which opened on the POV of, I think she's our main character, our protagonist. Um, her name is Kissen, which is short for Kissena, I believe, if I remember correctly. And then chapter two was a different POV of, I think this is the person I talked about in my intro clip. Her name is Inara and she is bound to this god called Skedi. So we have learned that Kissen is a god killer and in this world gods and worshipping gods, praying to gods, everything about that is basically forbidden. So these god killers work in the name of the king and they literally do what their name suggests and they're being hired by by towns, by cities, stuff like that um, to kill gods if they appear in their area. So that's what Kissen is doing basically. Now Inara, who is bound to this god, has sought out Kissen to try and help her with this god problem that she has. And they just had their first encounter, which was um, not very helpful for Inara, not a lot of fun for Kissen. <laughs> so I'm very interested to see where this is going and how their relationship will develop, if they're going to help each other or if Kissen will help Inara at all, or like how the plot will proceed, you know? I'm just very curious to see how everything's gonna go. That's where I'm at, that's all I wanted to say. I'll try and continue reading today and continue crafting today and then I'll give you another update whenever I have another update.
Hello, it has been two days since I last talked to you, but I have an update for you now on both my crafting project and a reading update. I didn't update you on anything yesterday because there wasn't really much to update you on. I read like 30 pages or something in God Killer yesterday and I was just really so focused on crafting this little book nook that I don't know I just didn't really have much to update you on so I thought I would wait until today and then give you a better update or at least have more to talk about you know what I mean so let's first talk about my little crafting project it's sitting next to me on my desk right there that's why I'm looking over there and honestly, it's been coming together so, so, so well. By the way, I'm also feeling a lot better by now. You might be able to hear it. I'm definitely feeling a lot better, which is really, really nice. The crafting project. I have started assembling stuff, which has been so, so much fun. Like until I think yesterday, I mostly just had individual pieces, like individual bookshelves and desk and chair and these tiny little boxes that I showed you and stuff like that. But yesterday I actually started assembling stuff, like gluing stuff onto these big boards and then like putting these boards together and I also put the the battery box and everything into the whole setting <laughs> and the tiny lamps have been a bit of a struggle not gonna lie because I think mostly because the ratios in the instruction manual are much different than they are in real life so on the pictures in the instruction manual it will sometimes show like you can glue this here and the other thing here and there will be so much space in between but in real life there is zero space between those two things and I also made a Bit of a mistake but I'm not sure about calling it a mistake because I didn't know about it like I think I showed that I glued these tiny butterflies on around this clock and on the clock and it didn't really say anything about you're supposed to glue them here and not here so I just glued them anywhere I wanted to glue them you know Turns out, in that little corner, the lamps are supposed to go, like the cables for the lamps. And there is supposed to be this wood corner thingy that is supposed to hide the cables. But I accidentally glued one of the butterflies too close to the corner. So now this corner thingy that is supposed to hide the cables can't go all the way up to the wall because that's where the butterfly is but like the instruction manual didn't say anything about that when i was at the step of gluing the butterflies on which is actually something that kind of bothers me about the instruction manual a little bit because it's not very clear not very detailed a lot of times and the english isn't very good sometimes either i think i already mentioned that right off the bat I sometimes feel like this instruction manual was originally written in a different language and then translated very directly into English because I have these tiny papers for example that I cut out and then I just put them on the floor. I think it said sticky papers on the floor and I was so confused by that because they're not sticky. And like, does that mean I'm supposed to glue them on the floor? I don't know. I do have these transparent stickers, but I think they're for something else, which I only realized later, which is also a mistake I did because I did not understand the instruction manual correctly. Oh well, <laughs> I'm sure it's going to be fine. <laughs> 
I have glued a lot of stuff on this board today and I am now basically waiting for the glue to dry so I can fully assemble that. I just really want to rather wait a little longer than wait too shortly and then it's all gonna fall down or whatever. Um, I've prepared a couple more things already so I can then get to assembling them right away once the glue is dry properly. I am honestly so excited to see this all coming together like that. In general, this project has made me so excited. This probably sounds a little silly, but there have definitely been moments where I just stopped for a moment and looked at everything I've built already, all the things I've done already for this project and just like giggled to myself for a second and kicked my feet a bit with happiness <laughs> like a freaking child honestly but I don't know it's just such a validating feeling sort of to do all this painstaking work of assembling these tiny books and cutting out these tiny pieces and all that stuff and then seeing it all come together as a bookshelf and a cabinet and a desk and then being able to assemble it all into a full-on room with decorations on the shelves and stuff like that and it's just so i am enjoying it so much it's it's giving me so much joy i cannot wait to finish this and then put it on my bookshelf it's, it's gonna be so amazing. I am actually on the second to last page of the instruction manual, so I think I should be able to finish this today. But let's talk about a reading update for God Killer by Hannah Kana. I just finished chapter nine and I am, I think about like 25%, one fourth into the book by now. We have met another character like we've seen another character's POV by now and that is actually a completely different plotline. Like by now we have four different POVs but three of them basically belong to the same plotline because I already talked about Kissen, who's the god killer and then there is the girl Inara and this god Skeddy Seth who is for whatever reason bound to the girl Inara and these are three of the POVs and then we've got Elogast who is a former knight of the now king but he is not a knight for the king anymore for certain reasons. I've actually been enjoying Elogast's POV the most so far honestly because there are so many hints and little glimpses at things that happened in the past and memories he has and things that he experienced that make him feel a certain way or think a certain way or that are the reason why he has a certain opinion and stuff like that but we haven't really gotten a full story for anything yet so that just really really intrigues me i want to know more about elogast and his story and what the deal is with his relationship to the king and there's also we found something out about the king which is such a juicy piece of information not gonna lie but it's also adding quite a lot of angst to the story and that piece of information was also pretty much what set Elogast on his mission basically and then we've got Kissen, Inara and her god Skiddy or Skiddy Seth and they um, have run into a problem because something has happened to Inara that was incredibly tragic and really really horrible honestly especially considering that Inara is a 12 year old child but 
it has kind of brought Kissen and Inara a little closer, which is something that I've really enjoyed seeing because at first I wasn't really sure how to feel about Kissen because she seemed so sort of as if she's only ever doing things for herself, for her own pleasure, for her own benefits, stuff like that, and never really for other people's benefits. But since that event happened, we've seen that she has decided to now help Inara because Inara and Kissen sort of share a very similar fate and I believe it has made Kissen feel like she just has to help Inara because Kissen knows exactly what it feels like to be alone and sort of abandoned and she knows what it can feel like to be in a situation like Inara's so she's like I can't I just can't abandon this child and just leave her alone you know I have to help her somehow and get her to safety so that's what Kissen did and that's also how we met two other characters which are now going to help them further with Inara's god problem <laughs> let's call it that because Inara and Skedi don't really want to be bound together you know it's also kind of a thing that has never happened before in this world at least not that anybody knows of there's also, we've gotten a lot of backstory, a lot of history about this whole world and this place. There's this dead city of Blenraden, there was this huge war and everything. And it's all very, very interesting. I'm very curious where this story will be taken. And I'm also very, very curious how Kissen and Inara's plotline will connect to Elogast. Definitely curious to see where that is going to go. Also, one thing I really want to mention is that the diversity in this book is so great, in my opinion, because we've already seen so many diverse things displayed. Like, for example, different sexualities other than heterosexuality, um, different family models other than like mother father child and we've seen people with disabilities and it all feels so natural it just feels like this is such a common thing and nobody bats an eye and this is just normal in this world which i love to see that and i wish it was that way in our world as well like one of the characters has two moms instead of a father and a mother and it just it just is that way it's just natural and then there's the fact that our main character our female main character has lost a leg at some point in her life so she uses a prosthetic and sometimes even a wheelchair and there is another character who's deaf so they use sign language to speak to each other and that's just something i really really love to see and then it's also the fact that these whole like stereotypical male versus female jobs are kind of broken up because we've already seen a woman who owns a bar, which is something that I feel like in fantasy books 90% of the time the men own the bars and their wives are like the serving girls or like the cooks in the bar you know what i mean but this lady owned her own bar it was her bar her place and then we also have another female character who's doing smith's work which is also a pretty male dominated work otherwise especially in fantasy books i feel like so i just really enjoy seeing those stereotypes and heteronormative ways of society being broken up in this book and it feeling so natural i just really love seeing that diversity so yeah that was my pretty big update <laughs> i think i will talk to you again once i have finished assembling my little book nook 
and then we'll see if I'll continue this vlog a little further with just reading God Killer or if I'll end the vlog. I don't quite know yet. I'll see. In any event, I will talk to you again once I have an update on my little book nook, I think. I just finished assembling this book nook. I did the very, very last step and now I'm actually fully done with it, with all of it. The last bit of it was like so exhausting and kind of frustrating because it was so much fiddling with the tiniest bits and pieces and every time I accidentally hit one thing, like three things fell apart and then when I tried to fix those, another two things fell apart. <laughs> so I think I should have glued on way more things than I actually did and maybe I still can but I think it's fine. Like some things are loose that I think are not supposed to be loose. I'm I'm sure it's gonna be fine, right? <laughs> I just, maybe I'll glue them on at a later point, but right now I just don't want to meddle with any of this anymore because I'm afraid that I'll just knock everything over. I just put batteries in, but I have not actually turned the lamps on yet. So I thought we could do that together. I'm gonna try to lift this thing very, very carefully, find the light switch and turn it on. Oh my God, okay. Oh, that is actually, oh my God, that looks so cozy. I kind of want to live in that place if it wasn't so untidy. <laughs> <laughs> like oh my gosh it does look kind of cozy I think I'm gonna try Ooh, these lamps are like very bright and I did not manage to hide all of them properly the way I was supposed to because these cables are like so much longer than the instruction manual thinks they are <laughs> because they are kind of blinding if you look straight at them. The light just blinked out and on again. I think that means something. Um, it's, it's making a very high-pitched noise. I'm not sure if you can hear it on camera. I don't know, maybe it's my ears playing tricks on me, but I think it's I think it's making a really high-pitched noise. I think I'm gonna turn this back off quickly. <laughs>
It's the next day. It's already a little past 4 p.m. Which is why I'm kind of trying to keep the lighting situation acceptable. I hope that it is because it's already slowly getting dark outside. Anyway, I wanted to give you an update on the little book nook you can already see in the background right here and obviously a reading update. First of all, an update on the book nook because I ended the last clip rather abruptly, I believe, because I thought something was wrong with the lights, the lamps of the little book nook. But as you can see, it's shining brightly and gorgeously. And I think you've also seen it in the B-roll clips. I figured out that nothing was broken, everything was fine and everything was working the way it is supposed to work because this thing has a little sensor and that sensor senses the instruction manual said it senses heat but I'm not sure about that uh, when I opened my windows to let some fresh air in it was kind of having some trouble so maybe it is heat I don't know but there is a sensor and when I've got it switched on the sensor will detect whatever it detects and then the lights will turn on for one to two minutes and then they will turn off again and if the sensor still or again detects whatever it detects the lights will turn on again for another one or two minutes i can also switch this off completely obviously when i'm not at home or whatever over the night stuff like that because sometimes it also switches on rather randomly so i don't know what the sensor senses you know what i mean <laughs> but it is glowing the lights are working everything's working fine and i am so happy with this thing honestly the moment i figured out that everything was fine everything was working the way it's supposed to work i just looked at it for a moment the way the lights were glowing and everything was built together and i honestly just wanted to cry because i was so in love with it in that moment i'm still incredibly in love with it but in that moment it was just such an overwhelming feeling and i know this might sound a bit silly but like i had worked on this for four days and now it was done this project was done and it looks gorgeous, it looks stunning, it looks absolutely beautiful and cute and I love the way it looks on my bookshelf. I found this little spot between my V.E. Schwab books and my uh, Lainey Taylor books. I think I'll have to move all that around a bit. I had to move some books around in general to fit it and I think I'll have to move everything around a bit more very soon because I will receive another book very very soon which I'm also really really excited about I think it'll look gorgeous together on my bookshelf I'm just honestly so in love with this little book nook I'm so obsessed every time I walk past it or I switch the lights on and the lights turn on I just look at it and I am so in love I just I get so excited like a kid honestly <laughs> it brings me so much joy to just look at this thing and also crafting it brought me so so much joy so if you're thinking about getting a book nook like this a diy book nook do it do it like it does take some pretty good fine mortar skills because some of the things are really tiny and it's a lot of fumbling and stuff like that if you want to do it if you're thinking about doing it just do it <laughs> Just do it, honestly. I can totally recommend the experience I had while crafting it and the way it looks on my bookshelf is just chef's kiss, A+, plus, absolutely stunning, amazing. <laughs> I should probably stop babbling about that now and let's talk about a reading update because I have one. I can't remember which chapter I'm on right now, but I know that I am a little over halfway through. I'm like 52% through the book right now. And 
a lot has happened since I last updated you, let me tell you. So I think I talked about the fact that Kissen had decided to help Inara with her little god problem and that Elogast had also started a journey to help his friend. I'm not sure if saying who his friend is would be a spoiler. So I'm just not gonna say it for now, okay? Literally, right after I told you in my last clip, not my last clip, but the last clip in which I gave you a reading update, that I'm curious to see how their plot lines will connect, I figured out how they would connect. So that's how they met, that's how their plot lines connected, and honestly then some shit went down, some real shit went down, and now they have to try and find a way to the place that they want to get to, which is proving maybe harder than they thought it would. Definitely harder than they thought it would because that shit went down and they have more things to figure out now. I also find it very, very interesting to see that this god that Inara is connected to is kind of influencing her more and more and I am not yet sure how I feel about that. I think it's definitely an interesting writing choice but I feel like it's probably unhealthy for Inara. So that's why I'm not sure how to feel about it, you know what I mean? I still think Aelogast is an incredibly intriguing character and I want to find out more about him and his friendship with the friend he's doing all this for. <laughs> We've also gotten some more backstory about the world and obviously the characters like Kissen and Elogast and we're also still kind of trying to figure out more backstory about Inara because Inara herself doesn't really know much of her backstory or like there are a few holes in her, not memories per se, but in the things she knows about herself and about her family, that type of situation. So we're trying to figure that out. Also, something I do want to mention is the fact that this god she's bound to, sometimes I can't really take him serious because the description of the way he looks just... I don't know. The way I imagine him, I just cannot take him seriously. Like most of the time he's described as this creature that looks similar to a hare, a bunny, basically. And like oftentimes he's also the size of a bunny. So I'm like, my man, <laughs> I know you're a god and shit, but I cannot take you seriously like this. Sometimes I'm definitely having trouble with that, especially when there's these huge statues of these really powerful gods built by these waterfalls and stuff like that in this world. And then there is this god that's kind of looks like a bunny, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I, I still think he's a likable character, sort of. Even though I feel like there's more to him that we don't know about him and that maybe he doesn't even know about himself. So that's definitely intriguing, interesting. I'm definitely really, really enjoying this book as of right now. I think it took me a bit to get into it, but now I'm really enjoying it. So let's see where all that will go. I think today I'm gonna bake a few cookies, maybe go on a walk, an autumnal walk. Maybe not though, because I'm still a bit sick. So I'll see where my energy levels are at. Um, either way, if I do, I will take you guys along, I think. And yeah, other than that, I think I will update you again when I have another reading update.
Hi, it's the next day and I did none of the things that I said I might do yesterday. However, I did all of them today. I baked cookies and I went for a walk, which was actually really nice. And I also have quite a bit of a reading update for you because I just finished chapter 24 in God Killer and that means I'm pretty much exactly 70% through the book. I was going to say that a lot of things have happened but also not that much has happened. It's, it's kind of both at the same time which probably sounds a little weird. Um, this group of characters that we're following are still on their journey, all with their own quest, basically, with their own little mission and their own goal. A couple of things have transpired. They're still trying to figure out a lot of things that they have not managed to figure out yet, but I feel like they're a few steps closer to finding out what's going on and finding a solution for some of their problems, hopefully. Hopefully. Because some things are really concerning me. There was also an event in which the god Skiddy that is with them used his power in a way that genuinely concerned me. And it almost made for some type of character development that I thought was or would have been very interesting. I'm not quite sure if he's still going in that direction or if it was just a one-time event. I'm not sure, but it creates this type of ambivalence because at the beginning of the book I thought he could be a cool character, a fun character, you know, that type of situation. And then at some point I felt like I could not take him seriously, whatever he did. And then that event happened and I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> um, so this is what we're doing now, okay. <laughs> they like, the group of characters found something out that I now find very interesting and sort of concerning. And I'm worried for the characters because I definitely have started caring for the characters. However, I do have to say that sometimes I feel like some of the emotional impact is missing, especially from fight scenes. I don't know why, I can't really put my finger on it, I can't really explain it, but sometimes I just don't know. Like for example, there was that one fight between two characters and they were physically fighting and I was reading it and like I understood that they were fighting and like physically hurting each other and stuff like that but only in the following chapter when the POV described that fight as nearly killing each other, I was like, oh damn, it was that serious? <laughs> Sometimes that type of emotional impact is just sort of missing a bit and I don't know why. Because other times I'll be sitting and tearing up from the inner monologues that some characters are having. So I don't know what that's about. There has also been some um, other development that I am quite enjoying, even though I would have almost wanted a bit more build up for that, but I'm still taking all the crumbs I can get. I wasn't sure if there was going to be such a plot point in this book at all but now that there is i'm actually really enjoying it so yeah that is what's currently going on another problem has risen as if the characters didn't have enough problems on their hands already you know <laughs> so i'm definitely curious to see how they're going to deal with that and I hope everything is going to go well. 
and they can all fulfill their missions and their goals and their plans and everything we will see i'm definitely enjoying this book at the moment which also shows in the fact that i have picked up my reading pace that's my reading update for tonight i think i will talk to you again tomorrow when i have another reading update It is not the next day, it's actually the day after the next day since we last talked and I have a reading update for you. I just finished chapter 29, which means I am 86% through the book now. I have like 50, 51 pages of the book left. So I am pretty confident that I'm going to be able to finish this book today. I do have an appointment today at 11.30, which I don't know how long it's going to take and I'll actually have to leave very, very soon. But I hope I can still manage to finish this book today. And let's talk about what's been going on since I last updated you. I don't think I can give you a lot of details, but I can tell you that I've been enjoying this book a lot, honestly. One thing I've been enjoying is that there's often rather small details in the descriptions of actions or like in general actions that are being mentioned or described that I personally feel like would be included in such journeys that often happen in fantasy books but are rarely actually mentioned. So for example, this group of characters Kissen, Inara, Skedi and Elogast are traveling with a horse and sometimes it's just being described how one of them is brushing down the horse, brushing the dust out of its fur or how Kissen will clean the horse's hooves while they're taking a break, you know, stuff like that and I'm like, yes! That is stuff that would happen, it would have to be done at some points on such a journey, but I can't really remember fantasy novels in which such things were described and I have definitely read fantasy novels where the characters traveled with a horse. It just often is being kind of glossed over or it's being assumed that the reader would know that or understand that stuff like that would happen but I love when it's being mentioned because it just makes it that much more believable through a simple sentence like Kissen was cleaning out the horse's hooves and I know it's hard to talk about believability when I'm reading a fantasy book but I think you can understand what I'm trying to say <laughs> one thing I find funny is that while we're figuring out or finding out more and more about this world as the readers i'm realizing that god damn it there really is a god for everything in this world like at some point there was the mention of a god of broken sandals like of course there's like the god of war the god of the sea the god of fortune, stuff like that. And I'm like, yeah, those are gods that would exist, you know, if there's gods in a world, but a god of broken sandals? <laughs> and there's other moments where gods are being mentioned, smaller gods, and I'm like, wow, there really is a god for everything. And I know it makes sense considering how gods come to be in this world, but it's kind of funny, not gonna lie. <laughs> What's not funny though is some of the other development that's been going on and I am quite concerned and kind of scared about how this book is going to progress and how it's going to end and I am a bit nervous. <laughs> I know 
I mentioned earlier how at some points there was a bit of emotional impact missing in certain scenes, at least for me personally, and I do still stand by that, but the book has definitely been making up for that, trust me. There have been some pretty powerful and very emotional scenes in this book by now. I was reading this in bed this morning and I was tearing up at like 7 a.m. in bed and I was like, God, I like seeing some of the character development or maybe it's not even character development, but we're just getting to know more about certain characters and I love seeing more sides of them and more vulnerable sides of them. I'm just enjoying it so, so, so much. There was one scene where I'm kind of not sure if I liked it or if it was a bit unnecessary or if it felt a bit unnecessary for me. Maybe both, honestly, because like something can be sort of unnecessary for the narrative, the plot, but I can still like it, right? I'm still trying to figure that out and obviously I can't tell you what it is but I'll probably figure that out for myself at some point. Something I also need to figure out is how I feel about this book in general, how I want to rate it because I've been swaying back and forth on my star rating for this book. At first, when I started reading this book, it took me a bit to get into it, but then I started really enjoying it and I was like, ooh, this could be a pretty highly rated read for me. And then I started seeing some issues with the book and stuff like that, and I was slowly kind of downgrading my star rating in my head, you know? But now I've been slowly upgrading it again, and now I'm like, I don't know how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll figure that out once I've actually finished the book probably because it's still too soon to really put my finger on a specific star rating. Sometimes you just have very specific feelings about a book and its star rating while reading it already. Like sometimes you just know this book is a five star read or this book is a three star read before you even finished it. But with this book, I'm kind of swaying back and forth. So I'll see how I feel about that once I have finished the book and I will talk to you again once I did finish the book. <laughs> Hi, I think I should give you a little side note before I start talking about what I'm actually here to share with you because I already filmed a wrap up and everything for this vlog yesterday. So today is the day after I finished this vlog. Yesterday I finished reading the book that I was reading in this vlog, but the thing is that today I have received book mail and this book mail is a really special occasion for me and I am so incredibly excited about this book mail. It's a special edition of a book I have already read by now and ever since I read that book I knew I would want to unbox this special edition on camera, especially because this particular edition is such a special occasion for me and I'm gonna get to that in a second. I'm not planning on filming a book haul anytime soon and now that I'm holding this 
package in my hands, I know that I would not be able to wait until I start my next reading vlog. So I just wanted to include this in this reading vlog so we're gonna do that quickly now and then you're going to see me from yesterday wrap up this vlog okay <laughs> i have received a package from oh my god i'm so excited to be saying this i've received a package from owl crate <laughs> this is actually the first time I've ever ordered anything from a bookstore like Owl Crate, Illumicrate or whatever and just holding this package is so exciting for me because it already looks so pretty honestly and I am so incredibly excited to open this package. This is a special edition, the Owl Crate special edition of The Fragile Threads of Power by V.E. Schwab and I've only ever seen the pictures that they put up on their website and I've tried to stay away from any posts on social media of people that have already received this special edition in the mail because I wanted to see it for the first time in real life in full, in its full glory, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna open this package now and I, I'm so excited. This is also the first time that I have bought a special edition like this, like a, a limited special edition from a place like Owlcrate, Illumicrate, etc. The only other special editions that I do own are the 5th anniversary edition of Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor, but that one you can just buy at any bookstore i believe or order from any bookstore and then i do own by now the collector's edition the collector's hardback of a good girl's guide to murder by holly jackson this one is from waterstones if i remember correctly but i think you can just order it from waterstones like any other book too so this is a really special occasion for me and oh my gosh, I am so excited. Anyway, let's open this package now. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> I'm so, I'm, I'm not even, I'm like holding my breath. So the first thing that says hello to me is this little card in the package. And then there's a little synopsis of the book, The Fragile Threads of Power, and what this exclusive edition includes. Oh my god, I'm so excited. It is wrapped in foil, but oh my gosh, it already looks so absolutely gorgeous. Oh my god, look at this. This book, oh my god. I... I'm kind of scared to unwrap the foil from this thing, but I'm gonna do that now. Ooh. <laughs> I'm so scared. I don't want to damage the book. I don't want to accidentally rip anything that should not be ripped. Which is also why I'm not using scissors to unwrap the foil from this. I am not touching this book with anything sharp. Also, this is this book is so incredibly heavy. This it looks so gorgeous. Look, we've got Tess on the front, who's one of the main characters from this book. And the, oh my god, the font is beautiful and the spine looks absolutely gorgeous. The back looks absolutely gorgeous. Oh my god, the stenciled edges look absolutely beautiful. Oh my god! The character art is oh my god. This character art, look at that. Can you can you see that? Oh my god, that is absolutely fantastic. What does it look like? Oh my god. I don't know if I can show you the character art in the back of the book because it might be a spoiler. I'm not sure. I'm just maybe not going to show it to you. But it looks, oh my god, this looks absolutely stunning! <laughs> Let's look at 
Oh my god, you're kidding me. Oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> I feel like I just keep saying the same. Holy, oh my god. This, whoa. <laughs> Back when I considered ordering this special edition. I was like, oh, it's so much money. Should I really order this? But oh my god, this book was worth every freaking cent. Look at the way it looks under the dust jacket. <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> Look at this. <gasps> oh my god. It's, it's like holographic. I don't know if you can see that on camera. I think you can. Magic doesn't die, it only waits to be, oh my god, oh my god. And there's also, I think this is a reversible dust jacket? Yes, reversible dust jacket with character art. Your kid, oh my god, this is absolutely gorgeous, look at that. Look at them, oh my god, this is so beautiful oh my god oh my god okay i want oh my god oh my god and it's also signed <laughs> this signed first edition was printed exclusively for owl crate oh my god oh my god this is so oh my god i am so happy that i made the decision of buying this book oh my god this book is absolutely gorgeous um let me just tell you quickly who did all this art because i want to make sure that you know who did that so this is a completely redesigned cover this thing right here by lenyan.art designed by lishan underscore and underscore limestone i believe on instagram probably i already mentioned the artist for the reversible dust jacket the foil designs on the front and back of the hardcover case are by divine literary which oh my god just oh my god absolutely stunning absolutely beautiful gorgeous i don't even know i'm so torn now whether I want to have this book be displayed without the dust jacket on on my shelf or with the dust jacket on and if I do put the dust jacket on like do I want to display this side or this side I mean everything about this book everything about this book is just absolutely stunning breathtaking <laughs> I also already mentioned the artist that did the stenciled edges and the character art end pages are by lastq.draws I actually follow that artist on Instagram they're doing amazing art they're also doing a lot of art for B.E. Schwab's books in general like a lot of fan art and stuff and I just think their art style is absolutely stunning, absolutely beautiful. Love it so much. And then there's also a ribbon bookmark. I don't know, it's somewhere in the middle of the book, probably. So yeah, that is my unboxing of my Owl Crate special edition of the Fragile Threads of Power. Let me quickly put on the dust jacket again. I am honestly so incredibly happy that past me made the decision to buy this book. Oh my god, I'm so happy. <laughs> I am gonna stop babbling about this now and I am going to hand this vlog back to the Maria from yesterday who will now wrap up this whole thing. <laughs> I have been back home from my appointment for a couple of hours by now and I have indeed finished God Killer by Hannah Kainer. I have no idea why my voice just did the thing it did. <laughs> and I have a lot of thoughts, a lot of feelings. I didn't really film too too much b-roll of me reading toward the end because there's only so much you can film 
while reading an ebook on a tablet, you know. However, I did update my reading journal just now and I filmed that, so I really hope you enjoyed that. And now let's talk about God Killer one last time before I wrap up this vlog. I also want to keep this brief because I kind of want to go to sleep rather soon. So the ending of God Killer, whoa, big whoa. I was so on the edge of my seat. There were certain plot twists and reveals that had me gasping and yelling out and I was just, I honestly feel so betrayed and kind of angry <laughs> because one character did something or it was revealed that they did something and I'm so, I'm low-key so angry and I feel so betrayed also on behalf of another character because the character that did something like I actually liked them and I liked the relationship they had with or have I'm not even sure with another character and now I'm like ah! very strong feelings right there very strong feelings that I probably have to process for a little bit not gonna lie and there's also some other stuff that went down and I'm just like, I need the sequel right now because there is going to be a sequel even though a lot of people believe this was going to be a standalone for a while, I think, but just a bit ago, a sequel was announced for this book and it's called Sunbringer and it's going to come out in February, which is in three months so not too far away, but like I need it right now. <laughs> I just want to know how the story continues and where the characters journeys will continue. I loved some of the character development that we saw and it was just amazing. There was some character depth missing here and there, but it is a rather short fantasy novel. I think the paperback has less than 300 pages, which is really short for a fantasy novel. So maybe that's it. And also there's going to be a sequel, so maybe we'll get more character depth there. As I already mentioned, I was swaying back and forth a bit on my star rating. I'm still not quite sure how I want to rate this book because I really did enjoy it. It took me a bit to get into it, but then I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the characters and the world building was amazing. It was kind of it kind of had medieval vibes, but then the world was also very progressive in the ways of diversity and um, different sexualities, different types of families, physical disabilities, for example, sign language, stuff like that, which I really loved so, so much because it felt so incredibly natural in the book. It wasn't overly explained, it just was. And that was good. Like, everybody just knew that that's the way it goes and that's how it is in that world and I just loved seeing that. It was so amazing, honestly. But I've already mentioned a couple of issues that I had with this book, so I don't think it's going to be a five star. I'll figure out what I'm going to rate this book at some point when I've processed that ending because I'm still angry. <laughs> But like, I just loved the ending too, because it was so tense and it stressed me the hell out, but it was the good kind of stressing out about an ending because it means I care for the characters and I was concerned for them. I definitely did enjoy God Killer. I also hope you enjoyed this vlog in which I read God Killer by Hannah Kainer and built up a little DIY book nook for my shelf, which I'm still incredibly obsessed with. And if you want, you can let me know down in the comments if you have read God Killer by Hannah Kena or maybe if you have ever built up a DIY book nook yourself. Or if you don't want to tell me any of that, you can tell me anything you want to tell me. 
Thank you so, so much for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe. And other than that, I will see you guys somewhere else on the internet or in my next video. Bye!